Well, welcome to you all. Um, my name is Abby Steinke, and I am doing a presentation on the effects of nutrition on cardio cardiovascular disease and other chronic illness. Um, I'm a nurse here at the hospital in Alpena, and I am currently completing my bachelor's through Aspen University. The presentation is for my community health nursing class. Next slide. Um, the objective of this PowerPoint is to review the prevalence of chronic disease and how individuals can prevent disease with proper nutrition and exercise and other lifestyle modifications. It's better. Okay. Yeah, um, chronic diseases are among the most prevalent and costly health conditions in the United States. Almost half of all of Americans uh, suffer from at least one chronic disease. Um, these diseases include cancer, diabetes, hypertension, stroke, heart disease, and respiratory diseases. Um, these can lead to extended hospitalizations, um, long-standing disability, reduced quality of life, and even death. Cardiovascular disease remains the leading cause of death in our community and nationally. Next slide. I just wanted to play a brief video um, just to highlight the importance of nutrition. Mission Critical Health, I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizullah. We all know it's important to maintain a healthy diet and lifestyle, but did you know that a healthful eating plan can treat and sometimes even prevent chronic diseases? The most effective and affordable method of preventing chronic disease starts with optimal nutrition. For those already suffering with a chronic disease, proper diet and nutrition should be a vital component within your healthcare program. Doctors agree that nutrition-focused interventions are one of the first treatments that individuals should receive to improve conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, and some types of cancer. Unfortunately, most people struggle with developing proper eating habits. In fact, a study in the Journal of the American Medical Association shows one in four men do not change their eating habits even after a heart attack, stroke, or other major cardiac event. Making a lifestyle change is not easy, but there is help. Registered dietitian nutritionists are the food and nutrition experts who can translate the science of nutrition into practical solutions for healthy living. RDNs use their nutrition expertise to help individuals make positive and personalized lifestyle changes. Ask your doctor if a referral for medical nutrition therapy provided by a registered dietitian nutritionist is right for you. Learn how an RDN can help you meet your health goals by visiting eatright.org. Um, so I feel like nutrition and exercise should be at the forefront of managing or even just preventing uh, chronic health conditions, but I feel like it's the last thing we focus on, yet it's the most cost-effective strategy. Um, I think we tend to focus on secondary prevention and tertiary prevention. Um, so primary prevention is the goal. Um, less than 1% of healthcare expenses are spent on prevention to improve overall health. I thought that was just such a um, shocking fact that only 1% um, is actually spent on primary prevention. And about 80% of our elderly population have at least one chronic disease and public health should focus more on primary prevention. Next slide. Um, the risk factors for chronic diseases are generally the same, um, hypertension, obesity, physical inactivity, high cholesterol. Um, and all of these risk factors can be prevented with proper nutrition and exercise. Next slide. Um, they recommend lifestyle changes, so um, avoiding smoking, maintaining a healthy weight, limiting alcohol use, eating a proper diet, physical activity, 
Um, I guess a lot of these are easier said than done for some people, but um, it will prevent chronic disease and allow you to live a better life in the long run. Next slide. Um, so foods to limit, I wanted to kind of focus on foods that should be um, used in moderation in our diets. So um, commercially prepared potatoes, vegetable mixes, canned vegetables and juices, frozen vegetables, processed fruits um, are usually high in salt and sodium. Um, I think some people just pick them up and think because it's a vegetable that it's healthy. Um, and then whole milk, malted milk, chocolate milk, buttermilk, cheese, ice cream are all high in saturated fats. Um, of course, cheese is good in moderation because it does have protein and calcium, um, but too much of it in our diet is unhealthy. Um, meats and beans, so smoked meats, cured meats, salted, canned fish, um, meats or poultry such as bacon, sausage, sardines are um, high fat meats. Um, so like beef, pork and chicken with skin on it. Um, smoked meats, especially, um, they have nitrates in it and nitrates are a cause of cancer. Um, next slide. Um, and then avoiding fats altogether. Um, so butter, lard, margarine, um, obviously we use them in foods, but moderation is key. Um, condiments and snacks uh, that are high in salt. So fried foods, pop, chips, and other sweetened drinks are um, obviously unhealthy in excess, in excess in sweets, um, and then avoiding alcohol um, in general. So next slide. Um, so the dietary approaches to stop hypertension. So this is called the DASH diet. Um, in the hospital, we tend to um, educate a lot of people on this type of diet. Um, it's a heart healthy diet. It focuses on eating less salt and then, and then focusing on less food, high in saturated fat. Um, and then also incorporating more minerals um, such as potassium. So foods like bananas, spinach, broccoli, potatoes, um, and then adding more calcium to your diet. So yogurts, um, chia seeds, almonds are high in calcium. Um, and then vitamin B12. So salmon and salmon also has like omega fatty acids that are um, extremely great for brain health. Um, and then eggs. Um, also um, increasing fiber in our diet. So lots of fruits and vegetables like strawberries, avocado, raspberries, um, just overall eating a more well-balanced diet. Um, next slide. Um, so this is kind of the healthy eating plate that is recommended. Um, so obviously drinking lots of water, um, tea or coffee is fine. Um, obviously not adding sugar and limiting the milk and dairy. So obviously a coffee, um, like a macchiato from McDonald's is not healthy, um, but black coffee in moderation is fine. Avoiding sugary drinks um, and then just making sure that you're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables. Um, if you see on the plate, that should be half of our consumption. Um, and then just limiting our protein. Our bodies really can't digest an excessive amount of protein. Um, next slide. Um, cardio cardiovascular disease and stroke. Um, so I wanted to focus on this a lot. Um, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, um, and smoking are the prime risk factors for heart disease. Um, and it's also the leading cause of death in Michigan and in the United States and actually worldwide. Billions of dollars are spent on these diseases alone in the US um, when they can be prevented with diet and nutrition and exercise. Um, next slide. Um, diabetes is a very another um, chronic disease. Type two diabetes is more common than type one. Um, the major risk factors are physical inactivity and obesity. And there are over 34 million individuals in the United States that have diabetes. One in five of them don't know they have it. And it is the seventh leading cause of death in the US. Next slide. Obesity is another um, disease that has grown in the United States. Um, Michigan is actually a leading state in obesity. And the occurrence of obesity in the US was about 42% and is rising each year. Um, obesity causes many other health conditions such as heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. And obesity leads um, to premature, premature death overall. Next slide. Um, cancer, so about one third of cancer mortalities are due to the five leading behavioral and nutrition risks, such as a high body mass index, um, low fruit and vegetable intake, physical inactivity, 
tobacco use and alcohol use in excess are, um, and these are consequently preventable. Um, lung cancer, rectal cancer, stomach, liver, and breast cancers are responsible for most cancer deaths each year. And a lot of these cancers are linked to poor nutrition and physical inactivity. Next slide. Um, so the rest of this is kind of focusing on diet and we can resume to the next slide. Um, so salt and sodium, or salt and sodium, they're the same thing. Um, but the principal rationalization for reducing sodium and its effect on blood pressure, uh, which is a major risk factor for stroke and coronary artery disease. Um, the World Health Organ Organization has recommended an upper limit of 1.7 grams of sodium per day, which is five grams of salt per day, which is actually a very little amount. I think it equals to like maybe a teaspoon of salt. Um, which is not a lot. And if you look at a lot of our, um, our things we eat in a day, we definitely um, eat a lot more salt than our bodies can handle, which is hard on our kidneys. Our kidneys can't filter out that amount of salt. And then we tend to get dehydrated um, quickly because of that. Also, salt builds up in our arteries. Um, it stiffens our arteries, which leads to other issues also. So we can resume to next slide. Um, this is just kind of a, a little picture that I thought was interesting. Um, it just talks about too much sodium. So just about um, majority of the population consumes way more salt than necessary. Um, so our food also has a high content of salt. And then you see people who just put more salt on things. Um, there is a substitute for salt and it's called Mrs. Dash. Um, it's a seasoning that people can use um, instead of using salt. Um, so it just looks um, at the numbers. So the amount of salt that an average person takes in is about 3,400 milligrams, um, where our average consumption or where we should be at is 1,500. So we pretty much double that. Um, and that leads to hypertension, um, which leads to cardiovascular disease, which leads to stroke. And we can resume to next slide. Um, this is so this is talking about McDonald's. And so we live in a small city um, where we have three McDonald's, which just seems a little excessive. Um, but so eating a Big Mac and fries um, in the first 10 minutes, our, our brains just prefer high calorie foods. It stimulates neurotransmitters um, that makes us want more. Uh, these foods are high in sugar and salt and fat. Um, so they have addictive sugars in it, which make people go back for more. Um, and then the sodium attacks our body and then it slows our, digest our digestion. So I thought this was an interesting fact that it takes about 24 to 72 hours to digest food. Um, however, hamburgers take a lot longer because um, they're greater and greasier. So it can take um, about three days to fully digest a Big Mac burger. Um, we can resume to next slide. Um, physical activity is another component that is very important in prevention of chronic disease. The recommendation for adults is about 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity um, activity or 75 minutes per week of vigorous activity through the week. Obviously, um, you don't have to start out at that amount, but building up to that amount is important. Also, muscle strengthening, um, so resistant bands or weights, and this doesn't have to be um, a lot of time either. You could do like 10 minutes three times a week um, for muscle strengthening. Um, with either three pound weights or lighter, um, and then increasing intensity as tolerated. And we can resume to next slide. Um, I also wanted to point out the recommendations for children um, because children are kind of our future generations and we should be educating them on the importance of nutrition and exercise. So children uh, three to five years old should be um, active and have plenty of opportunities to move throughout the day. Um, ages six to 17, year, uh, 17 years old should get at least 60 minutes per day of moderate to vigorous intensity, um, and then include vigorous activity on at least three days per week. So this include um, muscle and bone strengthening, so weight bearing activities on at least three days per week. And we can resume to next slide. Um, examples of this moderate intensity activities could be brisk walking. So just moving more is better than not moving at all. So at least two and a half miles per hour is the recommendation. Um, water aerobics and the plaza pool has lots of classes. So if you um, have arthritis or other issues, um, that might be a better option for you. 
Um, and then dancing, they included ballroom or social dancing, um, gardening, um, yoga, riding a bike are all great activities um, that can be done at least three to five days a week. And we can resume to next slide. Um, and then examples of higher intensity workouts, which are not great for everybody, um, but running, uh, swimming laps, um, Zumba, it's a kind of a uh, dancing exercise class, hiking, um, especially on an incline. And we actually have lots of great places here in Alpena for that. Um, Chippewa Hills is out in Osneek, Rockport, and then Norway Ridge. Um, so trails that can be done here in town. And we can do next slide. Um, this is just a video that walks you through the benefits of exercise on our heart. Remember the last time you climbed a flight of stairs? Did you feel your pulse speed up and your face get warm? That's because of changes that happen in your heart during physical activity. Your heart's job is to move blood around your body, blood that contains oxygen, which your muscles need to work. When you exercise, your muscles work harder and need more oxygen than when at rest. To deliver this oxygen, your heart starts to beat faster, which is why you feel your pulse speed up. When you exercise regularly, your heart gets used to moving more blood through your body. The left ventricle, the part of your heart that pumps out blood, make it bigger and stronger. And with each heartbeat pumping more blood, your heart has to beat less often to do the same job. This means both your heart rate during exercise and your resting heart rate will decrease. Regular exercise, in addition to a healthy diet and not smoking, can help prevent the buildup of plaques in your arteries, reducing your risk of heart disease, heart attack, and stroke. Frequent exercise also causes new blood vessels to grow in your body, improving circulation and overall health, not to mention helping you lose weight and look and feel better. While chronic inactivity can lead to weight gain, high blood pressure, and cardiovascular disease, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that adults get at least 150 minutes of exercise per week. Any length or intensity of activity is healthier than no activity at all. So start at your own pace. Try taking a few short walks a day or climbing a few flights of stairs and notice as your heart gets healthier. I just wanted to highlight that importance because I think even a lot of children um, don't get the physical activity they need, especially with electronics. Um, you see a lot of kids on phones, tablets, video games, um, which largely don't require any type of activity at all. Um, so childhood obesity is actually rising also. Um, and then just the convenience of fast food. Um, it's cheap and convenient for a lot of um, parents. So. Um, that just leads to um, poor nutrition um, overall. But the takeaway um, from the PowerPoint is to proper or to have proper nutrition and physical activity, um, which reduce the incidence of chronic disease, um, reduces depression and anxiety, builds muscle, which can reduce injury down the road, it, less weight gain, um, which leads to a more healthy lifestyle. And then you also sleep better with proper nutrition and physical activity. And we can go to next slide. Um, and this is the end. So if anybody had any questions over any of the material um, that I could answer for you. It's, it's all done. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody had um, any questions over any of the material. And I also have like um, information on DASH diet and the heart healthy diet if anybody is interested in that also. Um, I just, as working in the hospital, you see a lot of people with chronic health conditions who are hospitalized multiple times for the same issue. Um, and it's largely because they are uneducated about diet, physical activity, um, what they should be eating. So. Any questions from the audience? So thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. A lot of good information. Uh, if uh, is that presentation available if somebody wants to copy it? Yeah, so, so um, the education? Yeah, yeah if, of if course. If uh, anybody wants a copy of the presentation, mm -hmm. just send uh, us an email at all 
at Alpina or at alpinacc.edu and we'll make sure you get a copy. Thank you, Abby, Thank you. Uh, for your uh, presentation. Uh, Abby, this is part of Abby's requirements for <laughs> moving on in yes. the academic <laughs> world. So we appreciate uh, uh, showing up and uh, we'll be happy to put this on our YouTube channel and so forth. So thank you. I'm well going to I'm sorry. Well done, Abby. Thank you. Great. Thanks for attending. And we'll end the program now.